This is Kemu. Uh, I want to just introduce Kemu with the tweet. She just quoted me, I fear the cruel hand of Kewu, the end bringer. You can find that on her Twitter account. <laughs> or from Leapbot. A round of applause, please, for Kewu. Are all the. Okay, sounds like a right one for me. Cool. Okay. So, uh, my lightning talk is about my favorite frame for examining differences in communication styles, which is called ask versus guest culture. Um, and it is something that I find can cause a pretty strong culture clash and therefore tensions if, if, you're, if it's something that you are not aware of. So let's go ahead and start with an example. So here's the situation. This is you, and this is your friend, Jamie. Jamie has a friend that you've never met named Taylor. And Taylor is going to visit your city and needs a place to stay. You would rather not host a stranger. But your friend asks you, can Taylor stay with you? What's the instinctual reaction in your head? Not out loud, just in your head. Is it something along the lines of, oh, I'll just tell them no? Or is it something more like, oh, this kind of puts me in a difficult position? Just a really quick litmus test. If you think it's not a big deal to just say no, you are most likely from ask culture. If instead this situation would make you feel really uncomfortable, you're most likely from guest culture instead. Um, quick poll, how many people would have characterized themselves as the first one, I'll just tell them no. Oh, okay, wow. And then uh, then everybody else presumably, guest culture? Oh yeah, yeah. Because we're, right we're in the Pacific Northwest. <laughs> Portland. Okay, cool. <laughs> that was kind of judgy. <laughs> 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 also, the Midwest is totally guest culture. Yes, yes. Wrong. Yes. I have a diagram for that. We're just flying. We wouldn't do that. Yeah, it doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> He's Should I that? As far as I can tell, this ask versus guest culture description, anyway, first came up on an Ask Metaculture post in 2007. And the way it's described there is, in some families, you grow up with this expectation that it's okay to ask for anything because you're okay with getting no for an answer. And that's ask culture. In guest culture, you avoid asking unless you're pretty sure that the answer is gonna be yes. And the way that you know if that answer is going to be yes is by putting out delicate feelers, which if done well means you won't even have to ask, you'll just get an offer. And so even then, you still have to use your best judgment of whether to accept the offer because maybe that was just to be polite. If you accept the offer, you don't want, you know, you might be imposing on this person too much. And putting other position, others in the position of having to say no seems rude to you. So it's really a, you know, it's a spectrum, not a dichotomy. And based on my own personal experience, different regions in the U.S. are at different points along this scale. Note where I have placed the Pacific Northwest and the Midwest. Uh, globally as well, I, I found that some countries have a really a culture of being really direct, like Germans, uh, while others are much more indirect, like in Japan. And if I thought sooner, I wanted to put Canada kind of on the right hand side. <laughs> uh, so let's go through a couple more examples. So this first one is from a medium piece I read about something the author called the Seattle No. Uh, that's just the name that they gave it. It goes something like this. One person says, hey, I'm going to this party. Do you want to come? And if the answer is anything along the lines of, hmm, that sounds interesting. I'll have to check. Or, oh, yeah, maybe and then you don't hear from them again about it, this means no. <laughs> this is something that's not obvious to everyone necessarily. So here's another example that's happened to me personally. Normally on the weekend, my husband Dan and I each cook one big meal to have leftovers for the upcoming week. I offhandedly said out loud, I don't think I have time to make lunch for next week. And I was just talking out loud about how I would need to figure something out for lunch. But he interpreted it as, could you make some extra meals so that I have lunch for the week? So then he says, I'm going to cook two meals this weekend. And I'm over here thinking, that's really weird. He's planning to make an extra meal this weekend, but okay, fine. And I didn't say, oh, you don't have to do that. And so as an end result, at the end of that weekend, I'm over here thinking, why do we have so much food in the fridge? And he's over there thinking, I'm such a good husband. <laughs> so I'll talk quickly 
about the pros and cons of these different cultures. Like, obviously, I have a strong preference for one of them, and I'm sure that bias comes out, but it doesn't mean that it's objectively better overall. So as culture prioritizes efficiency in knowing exactly where you stand, because there's no ambiguity, and it tends to get you want what you want, at least in the short term. But it can be kind of confrontational and end up making people feel uncomfortable. Yes, culture, on the other hand, prioritizes avoiding hurt feelings or embarrassment from direct confrontation, and it's generally considered more polite. It depends on this tight net of shared expectations, and so if you're bad at reading social cues, you can miss out on a lot of these sub subtle signals, like I do all the time. <laughs> and if people don't share your expectations, it can feel like no one is listening to you. All right, I have one minute left, so. <laughs> so a couple big strategies for handling. It's really about sort of trying to step into the other culture and seeing things from their viewpoint a little bit so that you can both make sure your message is clear and people are comfortable. Um, if you're from ask culture, you can do things like make a close friend or be a guide and interpreter. That's what my husband is for me. I'll bring things home from them and be like, what am I missing that's going on between the lines and he explains it for me. Um, it's also make sure you know. Remember, it's not just about what people say, but what they don't say as well. Maybe you didn't hear a no, but it wasn't an enthusiastic yes either. And also, you know, if you screw up, apologize. If you're uh, from guest culture, on the other hand, just remember that some of us not, might not understand the rules that you're playing by necessarily. Um, and also, try to resist the urge to soften a no um, to make it easier to get across. Because if people don't understand you that will end up causing more hurt feelings and embarrassment later on. So uh, in conclusion, this is a topic I'm a little obsessed with and I love to talk to people about. So if you ever have any questions for me, please just ask. Thank you.